Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching. We're the Houston Brass Quintet. We are very excited about this program today. We're excited to have you watching, and we're going to kick it off with a piece called Colleen's Flight. We hope you enjoy it.
That one's a fun one. Well, thank you. Like I said, we are the Houston Brass Quintet. We are very excited about this program today. My name is Russell Hale. I'm the artistic director here at the H HBQ. The HBQ. That's what we're calling it now. The HBQ. And that first piece, like I said, it was called Colleen's Flight. And that was written by Canadian composer Ryan Meboer. I hope that's pronounced correctly. Yeah. yeah. Pretty close, hopefully. <laughs> Pretty close, hopefully. Um, and it's just a fun piece. And, and I was told that uh, Colleen means carpet or rug. And um, so you sort of got like the magic carpet flight, right? So that's what the idea was behind that one. And um, we need to introduce our guest artists for this weekend. We have on the tabla, Mr. Shantilal Shah, ladies and gentlemen. Woo. And coming in later on the sitar, we have Shane Mons. Thank you very much. We will see him in a few minutes. All right, but first, let me get my music in order here. We have a movement from a piece uh, which is very very cool, called Kirkian. We're going to play two movements of this piece today, but we're going to break it up. So the first movement we're going to play now, and it's called Jog. And Jog is a, uh, it's a form of a Hindustani classical rag, um, and, or raga, and it's not, um, this is not the, the composer named Rina Esmail, uh, who, who is based in Los Angeles, and this is a very recent piece of music, and uh, within the last 10 years. I, um, she, uh, she, she wrote, writes in the program notes for this piece that it is uh, not exactly the same as the pure form of, of raga um, from, from, that's called a joke, but uh, it's close. So, from Kirkian. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thunderous applause. <laughs> Shanti Lal is applauding for us. We have very few people here today with us because, as you know, the cases are going up in Houston. We want to be as careful as possible. So we are all going to put on our masks on this side of the room for the next few pieces. Man, that joke is a cool piece. And, you know, we, we learned it just in time. Uh, <laughs> And I love all of those little solo moments that we all have. It's very cool. So without further ado, we are going to move on to the very special uh, kind of second half portion of our, our concert. It's in the middle, but it's like a second half in the middle. So I will turn it over to Shane and Shanti Lal. What do you got for us, gentlemen? So, some, some Indian classical music from Shane and Shanti Lal. Okay, uh, first, just a very large thank you from us to the Houston Brass Quintet, to downtown Houston, Historic Market Square. Um, thank you for hosting this. I know that these are difficult times and any chance for musicians to just get out there and present something to the public is at least therapy for us. So thank you for that opportunity. I'm humbled to share the stage with Pandit Shanti Lal Shah, um, truly one of the great Gurujis here. So um, I'm honored. Uh, today we'll present um, Rag Miyang Ki Malhar. Um, and first I'll present the very short first solo, an alap. Um, and an alap is a free improvisation on the raga. Um, the raga being this kind of conceptual melody uh, framework for which Indian music melody takes place. So I'll present a short alap and then we'll present a composition, uh, actually a vocal bandish that's um, transcribed for sitar here. Um, and that takes place in 16 beat cycle. And so you'll hear us improving. Um, the composition's very short, only three lines of 16 beats and everything else. We're kind of trading off different variations. Ragmi Anki Malhar I chose for a few reasons. One, it's a rainy season rag, particularly a monsoon season raga. And now is the start of rainy season. It's also rained every single day in Houston this week and looks like it's going to rain now. Um, the lyrics of this particular composition are um, roughly translated like there's a gathering of clouds, there's this darkness coming. Um, I feel this anxiety of this darkness that's coming to rain. And monsoon has that kind of connotation, this uh, what could be pleasing because sometimes the monsoon rain is gentle and provides cooling, but what can also sometimes be thunderous and destructive, but ultimately something that's cleansing. So I think it's also a good metaphor for lots of things that are happening. So kind of the Mianki um, Malhar, first alap, and then Drut, fast composition in 16 beats. Thank you. 
Okay. Um, thank you. So wow, fantastic! That was fantastic. Very cool. Thank you, Shane. We have a second piece. Is that right? yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, give me one second to. Yeah, hey, we have a Shane? very small audience. You want to hand Shane the, the mic so so everybody can hear it's him? It's great, yeah. I mean, Shane Ch Chantelal. <laughs> no, just, Shane, you just uh, Go I'm ahead. feeling very happy that these days we don't get chance to uh, audience in uh, musicians in the audience. So, but I'm very happy that we have wonderful audience, uh, wonderful musicians. Those are listening us today. Thank you. Yes. So next, we'll just offer. Uh, uh, another very short alap, and then two small compositions, old compositions actually, from um, Magarana, the style that I play from. Um, so two short compositions, um, one fast and one even faster, um, in Raga Pilu, which is, um, uh, this is Mishra Pilu, so it mixes lots of notes and different ragas, kind of incorporates a little more freedom and romanticism and all of that.
Thank you. Very cool. So if I can ask, how old is that music? When when does that music come from? The compositions. Um, These particular compositions... um, so sitar music as a classical instrument is really a, from the 20th century. Oh, um, okay. Sitar as a folk instrument existed in the 18th and 19th century, but the type of vocalisms and pulling and all this wasn't really capable until the 20th century because the instrument construction had to withstand and the strings had to be high quality. and. Um, right, it's a very compli- complex uh, yeah, and instrument. This instrument went over a big evolution in the 1940s to 1970s. Lots of important sitar makers um, did many innovations to the instrument to make it possible. But this composition comes from uh, Inyad Kansab, who is um, born in the latter half of the 19th century. He probably composed these in the early 20th century. Okay. He died quite young. Um, and these, though, were released um, as uh, singles, 35s, um, on record. So these were recorded in the very early days of recording. So these two compositions, um, the previous composition, the vocal composition, might be a bit older th- from the first piece um, because it's a vocal composition. But this as a sitar composition in the style of right-hand stroke is very much tied to the, the first half of the 20th century. Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you uh, a few questions, Shane, since you're not playing on the on the last few pieces with us. But um, you know, the the music, the style of music between Western classical music and Eastern classical music, Indian classical music is is about as different as it gets, right? Mm. Uh, as a, as school musical schools, and um, and and so we we've had just a blast putting this together and um, listening to you guys play, uh, it kind of, I feel like it puts me in, in a place where I don't usually get to come from, meaning that I c- can listen to it without analyzing it at all, really, except for just going with what, I, what it makes me feel or, you know, the excitement, going with the emotional ride of it. Um, and, then, and then if you want to just tell everybody about the, um, the Shruti box and the, the oh, is that a Shruti oh, it was box? Just, it's just, just a, a recorded drone time and put up, you know, in a more traditional composition, I mean, uh, setting you would have uh, this drone instrument made of gourd and a hollowed out neck. It looks much like this without all the extra strings. It's just okay. a four string drone that uh, plays a... Uh, Okay. Um, that kind of pattern. Um, so this is just a plucked drone, um, has a huge sustain and creates the ambiance, and also gives you. I mean, very important in Indian classical music is the fixedness of the, the root. The right. Yeah. Yeah. So the so tonic, all, as you would all say. All Indian classical music stays on a constant root. Classical. Yeah. Classical music. Yeah. Right. I mean, I there's mean, filmy Indian songs and sure. you know very light songs that you know. Have different things, yeah. Semi classical, but okay. classical is very fixed. Oh yes, yeah, always yeah. to the the drone or the the tonic. It's very meditative, you know. It, it can be. <laughs> it can also be exuberant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very cool. All right, well, we will move on. I could sit here and ask uh, just a <laughs> hundred questions easily about it, and I hope everybody watching will go and that aren't that aren't familiar with Indian classical music will go seek it out and and learn more about it. And so with that, we'll move on to another brass quintet piece that is written for, written, originally written for brass quintet, and it's called Indica. And I actually misspoke earlier when I said the other piece was written by a Canadian composer. I don't know where that other composer is from, but this is the Indian composer, I mean, the Canadian composer I was trying to think of. And um, thank you, Shane. All right, so this is Indica by Bruno de Gazio.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. <laughs> it's always fun for us to be able to finish in silence without any audience clapping. That's always great. Oh, come on. The crew, we should be clapping for you. All right. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> so, like I said, so, like I said, we we uh, we love doing this. We you know we're doing something new for us. This is something we've never done before, the Houston Brass Quintet, and uh, it's just been a, an absolute pleasure working with Shanti Lal and working with Shane, and getting to learn from you. And um, so this next piece was actually an idea of Mary Gold, our horn player. Give it up for Mary Gold. <laughs> and um, so we're putting together two things that come from very different times and very different uh, areas of the world, especially at that time. So we are going to be playing a piece by Giovanni Pierluigi da Palestrina, who if you are familiar with ancient music, you will definitely be familiar with Palestrina. So this was written for the Catholic Church at the time, and um, the name is in Latin. I don't claim to know how to pronounce things in Latin, but it's called Peccantem Me Quotidie, I think. And um, so uh, so what we decided to do was ask Mr. Shaw to uh, accompany us on this. And uh, so this is a piece of vocal music that, we, that has been arranged by a man named Adrian Wagner. And uh, so we are going to, the Houston Brass Quintet is going to play the vocal music and we will be accompanied by Shanti Lal Shah on the tabla. So please enjoy Palestrina.
Thank you. <laughs> Not sure if you can hear our crew applauding for us, but it's very nice. Let's see. What do we have next? Yes. Okay. We have one more piece for you today. And before we play it, I just want to thank a few people. Uh, definitely the people of the downtown district. Uh, we have to thank them. They are our partners on this. They are paying for all of this. So uh, <laughs> we, we love it, and uh, we really appreciate them, and, and especially Lorette. Um, thank you, Lorette, wherever you are. We also want to, she's out there. We also want to thank the Hotel Icon, the beautiful Hotel Icon. Um, this is amazing. We love playing here, and uh, we hope to come back and play when it's filled with, with people. And, um, and I, I shared a, a picture of the, of the bar area downstairs um, earlier on the Houston Brass Quintet Facebook page. And uh, hopefully you get a look at that. If you haven't been here, come check it out when it is open. <laughs> and, um, and then, of course, we have to thank once again Shantilal Shah on the tabla. Thank you, tabla master. Shane Mon on the sitar. Where are you, Shane? Come back, take a bow if you're, if you're out there somewhere. Uh, and then, of course, my colleagues in the Houston Brass Quintet. We have Mary Gold on the French horn, everybody. We have Ryan Rangon on the trombone. Alan Lindsay on the tuba. Sarah Perkins on the trumpet. My name is Russell Hale. Oh, and of course, Wonky Power. Wonky Power, our sound guys. Thank you. Look, here's one now. <laughs> The wonkiest. All right. So we're going to finish up here with a very cool piece. This is the third movement of the piece I mentioned earlier, Kirkian by Rina Esmail. And this is the third movement called Tutarana. And uh, we, we, we thought about what does that name mean? And I asked Shantilal. And he said, I don't know what that word is, but Tarana means what? Tarana? Music, it's a musical line, yeah. And then, um, and, but I looked in the program notes, she explains, Rena explains, that tut, the T-U-T-T -T beginning of the word comes from tutti, the Italian word tutti, which means all together. So we all together play the musical line, and so that's the explanation for tutarana. Okay, without further ado, thank you very much for watching. This is tutarana from Kirky Jan. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. We'll see you next week with the final portion of the Diversity Project. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.